Can't stop dragons gaming podcast. We eat sandwiches and play games. Can't stop dragons gaming podcast. The podcast for everyone's day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Taste of Dragons, the Toddcast, the video game podcast that all you revelers listen to. This week, we're doing a New Year's special, where we take a look back at our games we've played throughout the year, the resolutions we've set for ourselves and how we did with them, the milestones we've accomplished, and take a look forward at the games we're most excited to play this year. And I'm your hostess with the mostess, words, Brian. And I'm just a boy drinking all his cares away one champagne bottle at a time. My name is Troy. I'm also sipping on a glass of champagne. I'm Amanda. And I'm the man who can't taste or smell anything, Lewis. And I'm the one enjoying the white sparkling grape juice of joy instead of champagne, Joe. Hey everyone, it is a new year. Uh, <laughs> if you can't tell from all the champagne and, and sparkling grape everywhere. You can tell what we did yesterday. And then not tasting. <laughs> Gosh, the floor is so sticky. We spilled so much. <laughs> it was a good, good night. That's how you can tell how good a party was, is how sticky the floor is the day after. Woo, 2021. Not gonna that could be that taken anymore. a couple of different ways there, Amanda. Just... <laughs> I'm just saying it was a good party. I, I moved right forward. I didn't even pause. <laughs> just, just kept going with it. Just keep going. <laughs> Uh, so how was your guys' New Year's celebration? I assume everybody stayed home. Yep. Yeah, we, we got a nice virtual celebration on. We got to pop onto a friend stream last night and, and had fun with you all in the chat as well, just kind of reminiscing on the things that really mattered last year. Movies, TV series, and video games. <laughs> and friends. And, and friends. friendship. And friends. <laughs> um, how about you, Lewis? Did you, uh, were you just staying home as well? Yeah, I was in my bed. I tried to sleep through it. I kept like going to sleep and waking up an hour later. I'm like, why do I keep waking up? Just sleep till tomorrow. Was I it can fireworks? Do nothing. <laughs> Is that why you kept waking can... up? Was it fireworks? It, I don't know why. It wasn't actually. You know, it wasn't fireworks. I'm a pretty heavy sleeper. I just kept waking up on my own from nothing. I'm like, I can't eat anything or drink anything. So sleep wouldn't didn't work. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's sad. That's well, sad. We hope you get your uh, appetite back soon. Same. Definitely. Uh, and then Joe and I, we, uh, we stayed in. Uh, we, uh, we had a Zoom call with a bunch of friends and rang the new year in on Animal Crossing. Oh, there was a it. sweet countdown uh, that happened and then fireworks all went off. It was, it was pretty magical. That's fantastic. Yeah. But you know what? Let's get into the games this year. <laughs> what have you played? That's right, and uh, we're going to be taking a look back at all of the games that we played this year, and um, and if there was anything that stood out to us, possibly, um, more than anything. Oh, damn, and, uh, we getting reflective in this 2021. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This podcast is like a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> is it like a black mirror? Because I don't want to get to episode oh. three. You I was about to say, that, that, was, that was all of 2020, my man. <laughs> 2020 was the worst Black Mirror season I've ever watched. Episodes uh, 3 through 11 were just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> 11 started to look up a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, I really didn't like that, that fourth wall breaking feature they added this year. <laughs> yeah, no, it was weird. <laughs> uh, but you know what, Troy, uh, would you like to start us off? Yeah, of course. I would say some of my favorite um, moments from this year included, I, I would say the the amount of Animal Crossing we all got to play. I think we yeah. were definitely, you can tell by the fact that we still do a Animal Crossing update almost weekly that it is <laughs> such a positive beacon of 2020 for all of us. Yeah. And we'll probably talk a little bit more about it later, but that's definitely one of my highlights of this year. Last of Us 2 also, it's it's made me think more about myself than a lot of games have in the past 10 years and and think about what it means to to deal with issues of grief and loss and rage and whatnot. And it, it really has stood out in, in a fantastic way. But I think just being able to kind of talk about games on a weekly basis has been <laughs> a, a really <laughs> wonderful way for me to actually remember and process all of the, the wonderful moments this year. Fall Guys. Fall Guys. Yeah, Fall Guys, man. What a fun game. For, forget yeah. Last of Us and Animal Crossing. Just throwing Brian <laughs> off of a platform every once in a while is, is all I needed this year to feel better. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I could help you out there, friend. <laughs> yeah. 
So I, I think it was really just the the varied amount of moments that uh, gaming has provided me this year to help distract from other things has been really worthwhile. And uh, I look forward to many more in 2021. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a, That was a great little look back there. Um, what about you, Amanda? I think my engagement with the indie community this year has been a highlight for me, both in playing more indie games, but also in being more involved in both finding Kickstarters, following Kickstarters, and uh, uh, flipping through Twitter is just seeing the development of the games and how important they are to the people that are working on them and how um, important they are to the people that are following and then having those communications has been uh, really wonderful. I really enjoyed the games that I played this year and I'm looking forward to the games that are coming out last year having followed them and I've never done that before. I've always played either played a triple a game which is not the same or uh, i played a game after it's finished it's like you just find it on steam or in in a GameStop, and you're like oh, i'll play that but having followed oh, the yeah. development of it and then played yeah. it i'm really looking it forward. makes it such a more personal experience when you know like what went into uh the developers creating that game but also you know the creators are going to know that you played it because and it's gonna there's not something. a lot of people that yeah. are playing it at this time so it actually helps them out and I, I, I agree with you. That was definitely a big highlight for myself as well, uh, being proxy to you finding these games. <laughs> babe, look at this one. Babe, 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 babe. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, oh, my God. We're going to get it. Oh, look, he liked my comment. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, for myself, it was actually a lot to do with, with Twitch. I've always been a watcher of Twitch, but I always just watched. I never really interacted with the chats. I never really did any of those types of things. And then uh, when our mutual friend Prince Baby Boy started, I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll watch his stream and I'll, you know, I want him to to succeed. And so for the first several weeks, um, it was just pretty much me and him. A couple of people would pop in here and there. Some of his friends would also be would be joining us and talking with them and, and interacting with them was actually really cool to see somebody else's friend group, you know, to, to interact with them, even though I personally don't know them yeah but just interacting with them like i do and then as it grew and as he started getting more people and and actually getting people to watch him and experiencing games with him was pretty magical uh, especially like the new people that i that i met along the way like uh like cold ash and knack and and Selsuka and a couple other ones where they were all just like just people i that just happened to pop in while he was playing a game and then just saying hi to them and then interacting back and forth. Yeah, it's very rare that you get to be with a streamer from the ground level. Normally, you hop yeah. into <laughs> ones that are already established or whatnot because yeah. that's the ones that you see. But it's great not just to see it from the beginning, but also see the kind of people who are actively looking for smaller streamers because those are exactly. also really cool people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Several of them were just people who are like, oh, I, he was playing Ashtoneer and he was like, oh, and, and they popped in because they search for a smaller streamer so they could help them along with the game. And then interacting with them and seeing what they were doing and, and a couple other games. That's just what they did. And so it was it was pretty interesting, especially because interacting with them, then they followed myself over to our stream and started interacting with us there. And now yeah. you guys all know them as well. And it's just very weird, but pretty darn cool that there's like a now a small circle of like so, sort of inside jokes now that have happened <laughs> just between, you know, like like 12 people, you know, right, right. <laughs> uh, but for me, that was definitely uh, a highlight of the year. Uh, for myself. Uh, what about you, Joe? Uh, for me, I would have to say I there were so many games that I really appreciated playing Animal Crossing, Ghost of Tsushima. I really loved watching Jen play Last of Us Part 1. I am watching other people play Last of Us Part 2. There's so many games that came out that are, are just kind of, they really helped get me through a lot of like the oh man, I'm stuck inside. I'm so used to being able to travel and just go out and do things and I talk with people day in and day out. So it was kind of hard to not have that kind of like personal interaction with people on a very daily basis right. and those games were so open there were so many characters and kind of like to a to an odd level i really appreciate the messaging system in playstation and the playstation 5's voice chat because i never really messaged anybody in games i never really talked to anybody in games when i was playing them so it was kind of really fun playing ghost of tsushima with everyone because we would take photos of different areas we were in and then we would message them to each other and it was so <laughs> fun to see like everyone else is such so creative and how they're able to do things and it kind of helped me be creative as well and then the ps5 comes out and has the voice chat that's even easier than everything yeah. in the other chat 
and it was it was so fun like everything the, those moments in time like I can't even say how much they meant because they really helped get me through what was a super dry spell of being able to chat with lots of different right. people and be and having a good moment you know having those times it was awesome and, and you reminded me Joe that the, the PS5 came out this year <laughs> what, yeah <laughs> what a big moment and and particularly the moment you're talking about where we all kind of came together was the pre-order moment when we were all frantically refreshing, trying to buy, looking on Amazon, checking Twitter, texting each other. We had a bunch of friends in a group. We were all looking out for each other. We all had each other's back. That night, as like tumultuous as it was, was such a cool gaming moment <laughs> without oh, a game yeah. involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, and that it really is kind of one of those, I don't even have a specific game because Animal Crossing obviously brought us all together. But like, yeah. man, that just gaming in general everything this year has been kind of like magic and it's been like like pixie dust everywhere every time something fun happened it was like look friends look and it was it was just really really awesome oh that's awesome that's awesome and then what about you lewis anything stick out in your mind uh uh for me I, i'd say uh <laughs> the obvious of um my because my, my game of the year was the last of us part two and uh for me it was just the impact that that game had on me in terms of a of a storyteller so that's definitely a highlight of the year even though i i understand everything you guys are saying with all the uh games and community and i agree and i agree to an extent um they just didn't affect me as deeply but i, I still played all those games that you guys are talking about i played animal crossing with all of you <laughs> for a little bit before i went ghost i uh I play Fall Guys whenever you guys play Fall Guys, and all, all those things are nice, definitely. And I, I think this year in general wouldn't have, as terrible as it was, I, I read something recently where it's like, yeah, I won't say that 2020 was terrible, but you know, no one wants to take a look at even the small moments of of gold that happened throughout. And um, oh yeah, just, you know, and and I'm not saying it makes the year better, but you know, it's easy to look at the bad. It's hard to look at the good. I think a lot of people also don't want to seem too optimistic about last year and don't want to sound like what like like for me personally it wasn't the worst year ever. Thankfully my friends and family are safe, they're still healthy. I uh, you know even even friends that have gotten it, it's it's thank goodness they're still okay. Yeah. But I don't want to be overly optimistic and happy about what happened to me last year because I don't. I feel like it's almost it's almost like being mean to those who had it way worse than I, I say. Did. For those who did, who didn't have that experience, it's it's rough. Guys, yeah. guys, we we can we can say last year. We don't have to say this year. That's anymore. true. We can say that's <laughs> true. Last year. Yeah, gosh. This whole is year the equivalent ago. of this is the equivalent of that circle and having to put a one on it instead at the end now. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but you did mention your game of the year, Lewis, and um, and I'd like to actually get into that with everybody. Uh, so, Lewis, uh, you you already mentioned your so 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 what was your game of the year and why was it your game of the year? Last of Us Part Two, and I'd say it's because it kind of for me, but first visually, it just it was a game that was it blew my mind how detailed and realistic it, it looked. The gameplay was so specific; it just didn't feel like a weird kind of generic loot and grab kind of r adventure game. Mm -hmm. It felt very real. It felt like all the movement was movements that humans would make. There wasn't like weird kind of robotic algorithm walking and then stopping. It all felt <laughs> like it, it felt like humans. And that was just visually. And then storytelling, it's it, it, the immersion. Yeah, the immersion yeah. for real. And then storytelling wise, it was uh, I thought it was a fascinating story. They went, oh, yeah, we could follow this story. But what if we shoot that story in the face D does that sound good and then they went with it <laughs> literally <laughs> literally and then people hated it and i'm like i love it for that reason yeah you know it made me enjoy it all the more so for me it was my game of the year because it was i thought it was technically brilliant and then also just yeah. storytelling it was they took risks they took risks and i think the risks uh succeeded in telling the story that they wanted to tell and, and the accessibility options that that game had are astronomical oh, yeah. it's one of the few mm -hmm. games that can be played by so many different people of, mm -hmm. of different capabilities that uh it really kind of set a golden standard for how games should go forward and you know story gameplay aside that by itself is groundbreaking yeah yeah for no for real and yeah. i mean unfortunately that game i played that game any any game that comes after it that is supposed to be like realistic art style 
it's unfair to those games because then I compare it to The Last of Us, and if it doesn't, I can't do that, man. I, can't do that. <laughs> I know I can't. I mean, you can. <laughs> I mean, you can if you just want to be, be happy. Happy. yeah unhappy. It's just gonna be time. rough. It's gonna be rough. <laughs> just take what the developers give you and then go from there. <laughs> but if they're trying to look realistic and then they don't look realistic, it's like, oh, why don't you look realistic, guys? That doesn't look like a human. Because they're people and they have limitations. <laughs> <laughs> so that was so that was so Last of Us Two that definitely belongs amongst the Game of the Year options and and that's great. Uh, what about you, Amanda? Do do you have your Game of the Year or a tie or a couple of them? What do you what do you got? <laughs> normally, I would say no. Uh, normally, I would have a hard and firm stance on like I don't like the concept of my favorite game because yeah, like everything that I play is so different. It's like, I, I can't put that one over this one because they're both good for different reasons. Right. But I'd say that this mm-hmm. this year made it really easy. And we've talked about this at nauseum, so I won't go too much into it. But it was clearly Animal Crossing because it wasn't yeah. it wasn't just a video game. It was, it. we used v- Animal Crossing instead of Zoom. We used Animal Crossing yeah. to communicate with people that uh, I haven't seen in years. We have like, not that we ever, ever stopped being friends, but there are people that we speak to once a week now that we had kind of fallen out of touch with. We had birthday parties in Animal Crossing. We had like our regular social gatherings that we've had every year for the past 15 years I, and we couldn't do them. We we got to have those in Animal Crossing. And I can't, there's, I, I can't think of anything that would top that because I wouldn't put any game over my friends and family so i guess it's an un- unfair comparison and that's the only reason it wins <laughs> <laughs> it's a good reason i think right? animal crossing does something that this podcast also does is you know we love our friends we love hanging out but getting on a camera or a phone call is, is is fun for as long as it lasts but sometimes it may ebb and flow depending on the conversation or whatever but having like something that you can work on together with friends something unifying I think, yeah actually makes the time that you are spending together even richer or gives you more of an excuse to hang out with each other and animal uh-huh. crossing did that it gave us a like mind it gave us a reason to help each other and to communicate and to tag team flowers and whatnot so uh, I think I think it was a it was a, a phenomenon this year. A phenomenon. Yes. A phenomenon. Bum, bum, ba, da, ba. Phenomenon. <laughs> uh, and then what about you, Troy? Animal Crossing is also my favorite game of the year, slightly followed by okay. Last of Us. So a little bit of Mandy, a little bit of Lewis there. I did a lot of soul searching <laughs> trying to figure yeah. out which of the two was going to be like my favorite. And and just like Lewis says, I think technically, objectively, uh, Last of Us is the best game of the year. But on a personal mm-hmm. level, Animal Crossing just uh, filled so many holes that were created <laughs> that Completely I, I, I can't, I just can't. It's it's meant so much. And even beyond me, when I see stories of people who have made memorials for their loved ones in that game, people who are getting letters from their mom, who in real life their mom has passed away, but in the in the actual game you get letters from mom and how that letter means so much more to them. They had protests in Animal Crossing in countries protests. where people weren't legally allowed to gather. Graduations, yeah. weddings, it, it talk shows, Danny Trejo, Elijah Wood, <laughs> like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like I, it's impossible to look at this year in gaming and not just see Animal Crossing like as a as a, a synonym for this year in gaming. Yeah. Other than that, I did make a top 10 list. <laughs> I won't go through <laughs> it right now, but I'll, I'll post it sometime on the website uh, or somewhere. Troy said I, I made a top ask. 10 list and what people don't see is me slowly reaching across to turn down his microphone. It's like, no, 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 no. Number 10. Thanks, Troy. A little hook comes from off stage and he's like, ooh. Yeah. And what about you, Joe? Do you have a... A game of the year, or a, or, or did, was it also a, a rough choice for you? This was very hard, actually. Yeah. I and the sad thing is that much like Manda, it's not hard because the only thing about making it hard is that I loved other games. I think almost as much as I loved Animal Crossing, mm-hmm. and it's hard for me to just let that go because I feel like it, it because it doesn't have a narrative and it doesn't do all these things these other games do. I feel like it's wrong to give this game it, but it's not wrong because Animal Crossing really did mean that much to me. Everything they said is true. It it was so important to how life had to continue moving forward this year, this yeah. past year. And I just, I don't even know how to explain it. I, they've already done a perfect job explaining it. It really was just, it replaced things that I needed in my life in a way that was still safe. And I was still happy. I was still so happy to work with things. I'm a, I'm a, 
I'm a goal-based person. I need to be working on something at all times to be happy. So watering other people's flowers was like the most awesome thing, like getting the water oh brigade gosh. together. The water party, the water brigade. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought I'd be so into flowers. <laughs> that's my I, that's all I care about in Animal Crossing so it was like getting something I didn't have for like eight or nine years back again and then it wasn't just me by myself playing it was me and every friend that I had already and then every person I never thought that would enjoy that was like well I guess I'll get this game since you guys are all playing it or, or I heard so much about it and it's like it was so it, wonderful it, creative self-expressive like I was wearing the same color outfit that my person was wearing in the game. Like if I had a, if I put a, a yellow <laughs> shirt on, I made sure my guy in the game was wearing a yellow shirt as That's well. That's awesome. So it was, it was so fun to still be me and be kind of social with everybody. And I, I appreciate that game. Especially the community. I mean, uh, the reason yeah. why it's so important because we, as a podcast, we were going to have a picnic, an Animal Crossing picnic. We made a little group. We were going. We yep. bought. We bought party favors. We booked it at the park, and then a week later, it was. It was in the middle. You know, it was the middle of March. It got canceled. They refunded our money. So we said, "All right, well, I guess we'll turn our little picnic group into an online group." And then more people got invited, and more and more people joined. To the point now, we have almost three hundred people in that community of just positive Animal Crossing well wishers in twenty twenty. In yeah, twenty twenty. Yep. Like, is it really? This game inspired that. It inspired the best in us, yep. I think, is why it is so important to us. It mm -hmm. did. I have a hard time, as, as you guys can go back to listen to other episodes, Ghost of Tsushima meant a lot to me this year. I don't really get upset while playing games because I'm an unfeeling monster usually. But man, Jin's story really... It got me. The photo mode got me in that game. So honorable mention for Ghost of Tsushima for me. Oh, man. Our collective photo mode parties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Like, I don't You're even... Amazing. I can't even imagine how you even thought up those photos or even got them. Because some of them are like literally like a split second went by and that photo's gone. And it was amazing. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm floored by the creativity of our friends in a game in a photo mode. Like, it's just unreal. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I feel like there's I feel like there's Animal Crossing, which is like, all right, yes, your favorite game of the year. And then there's like your game of the year. Like, yes, Animal Crossing is all it, it's just going to be on top of it all. But then it's like, what is your game of the year <laughs> without all the extra yes. stuff? And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yes. like it's if Ghost of Tsushima for you, Last of Us for me. <laughs> uh, yep, yep. I will say that, uh, that I think Ghost of Tsushima, to its credit, because of the photo mode, every other game now is now incorporating some kind of similar photo mode. Like Red Dead had an update that it now has a photo mode. <laughs> it's no longer just take like a weird old timey picture. Nope, it has a photo mode with filters and you can change the angle. <laughs> it's like, you guys only did that because of Ghost of Tsushima. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, those are great choices. And then uh, for myself, my game of the year... Uh, to surprise to probably none of you is uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, this game hit <laughs> yeah. me like just square in the nostalgia. Wherever that is on your body, it hit me there and it hit me there hard. <laughs> Hell yeah. This game, I never, I didn't watch anything for like trailers or anything like that. Like I was just like, no, I'm going to experience it the when it comes out. And when that first opening movie hits, it's the exact same thing from the original Final Fantasy oh, VII. Oh, gosh. Chills. And I knew it was going to happen. I've, I've actually seen it before. But actually having the controller in my hand while it was happening just hit me weird. And I was just like, oh, my God. I'm, I'm like, oh, not crying, but, like, I am starting to tear up because this is amazing that I'm actually experiencing this again uh, in my late 30s, you know? <laughs> it was, like, pure joy just happening oh yeah yeah joe was next to me while it was while it was happening <laughs> it reminded you of that feeling that something new and special was about to happen when it, when yes. it first pop in that final fantasy 7 disc when we were teenagers and then hearing that sound you you felt that and it brought that oh, yeah. back accurately it, it did it did and then the the twists that they did in the story the way that they made it different even though it was still the same story but the, the little twists that they did, the combat system was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It was everything that I thought I never knew I wanted, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm just really grateful that it came out this year as well. Um, you know, it also came out right during the pandemic and all that jazz. So, yeah, it was it was just amazing. That game is definitely my game of the year. It's great. The way that the graphics were able to update 
how you saw things in your mind's eye when you were playing the yeah. the, the polygonal blocky face version. <laughs> you had to suspend your disbelief and fill in what technically the developers are not able to achieve. Yeah. But now that it's 2020, they have made these characters actually emote. They can grieve. They can show elation. You can actually see the details and it makes the story that much richer, especially when they're trying to flesh it out yes. in, in the way they are. Yeah. And the the actual like embodiment of fans wishes that were inside the yeah. game oh my like, gosh which were the ghosts you know you could definitely tell like oh hey you know the developers you know th- th- we want to write it this way but then it's like uh, 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 the fans aren't gonna like that so the first one was like this you know the original was like this why would yeah. you change this it's very and then smart. seeing the literal embodiment of that in the game was very really smart. smartly done so I, I just realized something about myself. My my third top game is Final Fantasy Remake. My second is Last of Us. And my first is Animal Crossing. It's like I've been talking to you guys every week on a podcast. And right? you somehow influenced my, my feelings and, and preferences. <laughs> well done, you all. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> I am but a vessel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw one last little, a little thing out there. Is there a game that surprised you the most this year that came out? One that you weren't expecting to like as much? Or maybe something that... Um, you you never thought that you would play, but you started playing it and you really enjoyed it. Uh, for myself, it's Spirit Fair. Spirit Fair is a game I had been following, but actually playing it and experiencing it and the emotions and everything that happens with it was one of those games where it's just like this is this game's amazing. It's definitely a, a top ten game of the year, if not a top five. Uh, that I just I never knew I was it was going to do that the way that it did for me. Um, uh, uh, Joe, do you have one? Colt Canyon. Oh. I was shocked at how much I loved that silly looking little roguelike pixel shooter. <laughs> I don't understand. I I looked at my Switch and it says I put 35 hours into that game. I never oh, wow. made it past the third level. <laughs> so I must have just sat there and enjoyed pixel shooting at things like, like Oregon Trail only on crack. It was great. <laughs> uh, what about you, Lewis? Any any game surprise you this year? Uh, I never thought I would play Animal Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I haven't played it as much as you guys, obviously, but I never thought I would play it at all, period, because I saw the game, I knew what it was about, I knew what happened in it, I'm like, why is that fun? Peer pressure. (laughs) I'm like, why is that enjoyable? But then I I found myself like, I, I was in my own routine within my life where I would wake up naturally on my own, I'd be like, well... I'm awake at 6 a.m. Might as well just get my Animal Crossing stuff in for the day. <laughs> and I would just nice. do all my stuff at 6 a.m. <laughs> that I had to do. I'm like, well, there's anything else till tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, how about you, Amanda? I want to say Orlog. Is I, I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game in a very long time. And when I jumped into Valhalla, I was like, um, I, know, I know what this is going to be. And then there was Orlog. And it was just like, oh, no, I was wrong. I was very wrong. A, a pleasant surprise, that wonderful dice game. Nice. And then how about you, Troy? I got a tie. Don't be mad. Because the same, <laughs> fine, the same feeling. Among Us and Fall Guys. It's the party game, the big multiplayer party games that just kind of came out of nowhere and were instant phenomenons. And every time you play them, it, like it, the community that it brings together, friends come out of the woodworks. Like, you play Among Us? You play, you play Fall Guys? Can I, can, I, can I get in? Can I do this? And it's <laughs> simple. It's fun. It's inclusive. It the barrier to entry is so low and in the most spectacular way that uh, those two games were big surprises to me. Loved them to death. Nice. Those are great choices. Great choices. All right. So uh, I think that'll do it for our year in games. Woo. Wipe the uh, sweat off, y'all. Wipe the sweat off. I know, right? Good. <laughs> yeah. Wipe the 2020 off. Oh, my God. Uh, that's going to take about <laughs> 10 showers for, for 2020 <laughs> to come off. <laughs> Um, but you know what? Let's get into our news this week. News, 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 And this week, we only have one news item, and it's the only news item that we need for 2020. And and that is the KF console, or KFC console, if you will, from KFC. This was a what everybody thought was a joke item in June when they first announced it. Yep. But apparently, over the last week... It's actually a real thing, possibly. They're doubling down on it. KFC has said they created a console that's more powerful than the PS5 and has a built-in chicken chamber to keep your actual fried chicken warm (laughs) in the console. (laughs) I'm so... 
I like the phrase <laughs> more powerful because that could mean a few different things. Yeah. <laughs> it's just filled yeah. with batteries. It's just <laughs> all batteries. But they've actually partnered with Cooler Master, Intel, Asus. Is it Asus or Asus? Asus. Okay. Asus. They've actually. It's not Asus. <laughs> it's not Asus, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to actually create this new uh, console, with which is crazily hilarious. They have uh, reached out to Sony and Microsoft and said, uh, Hey, Sony, Microsoft, if you want any tips on how to engineer a chicken chamber for your next, uh, <laughs> for your next console, we will be happy to, and welcome to get in touch with us. If- and that came straight from the public relations and social media lead at KFC UK. <laughs> if this comes out, we have to get one. I know. <laughs> I don't want to eat KFC. It's so salty. We don't have to eat KFC. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll make our own. we we'll make our own fried what chicken. What if we? What if we buy it and then put Popeyes in it? <laughs> <gasps> oh, yes, yes. Blast. yes. <laughs> I do wonder if this is like gonna be like the uh, the movie that they came out with, which ended up being just a fifteen minute special. It like, was amazing. Which was amazing. You know, it was it was it is what it was. But I wonder if it's going to be like one of those or if this is going to be like, no, 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 we're doing it. <laughs> it's going to be a joke, right? They made the video game. Uh, was it Everyone Loves Colonel Sanders or something yeah. like that? Yeah, and, I love you, Colonel Sanders. Yeah. And at first you thought it was a joke and then it was an actual game. It was a short, fun game, but it was a game. Same thing with the movie. Yes. I feel like they're going to make this, but they're only going to make like one <laughs> or something yeah. like or, that. Or it's just going to be like a $50 console. It's just going to be cute and you're going to buy really it. It's going to play two games. It's just going to play I Love You, Colonel Sanders and one other it's, game. Yeah. It's going to be more cooler <laughs> yeah. than console. Yeah. Uh, yep. yeah, yeah but yeah, I yeah. love I love what the marketing team is doing this year. They almost make me want to buy KFC, but not enough. It's still not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> it's still not enough. Sorry. Popeye's chicken sandwich all the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. They'll do it for the, for the news, I guess. But we still have my favorite segment, which is turn up for what? Turn it for what? <laughs> and this week we have Lou from Fairhaven. Hello there, fellow islanders, and welcome to a new year in Animal Crossing. Now, you may be asking, what does a new year in Animal Crossing look like? Well, for some of you, it might look a little something like waking up from a seven-month nap to find that your island is infested by weeds, covered in beautiful snow and busy with islanders who thought you were dead. That's right, dead. Apparently, when you don't talk to any of your neighbors for seven months, the people of Fairhaven get scared once they see you out in the open with ominous background music to accompany their surprise at seeing your face again. So, going into 2021 of Animal Crossing, keep in mind that maybe you shouldn't disappear for seven months. That's a long time. Anyways, this has been Lou, wishing you all a Happy New Year from Fairhaven. Turn up for what? (laughs) That was amazing, Lewis. <laughs> I was I was hoping for something, and you just delivered so much more. <laughs> oh, it's so funny because I know it's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. In their defense, if you disappeared for seven months, uh, we would also think you were dead. <laughs> yes, yeah, understandable. Yep, it's like, it's like real life. It's like real life. It's like real life. Oh. <laughs> so great. Oh man, that was that was that was the best. Great way to ring in the new year there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that brings us to our mighty morsel tasty topic. Mighty morsel tasty topic. <laughs> and this year, or this week, we would like to uh, look back on our last year's resolutions that we ended up doing, our gaming resolutions, if you will, and see how we stuck with them and uh, and also update them for this year. So last year, I wanted to complete more games. I technically did that because I did complete more games. <laughs> you didn't see how many more. <laughs> I didn't say how many more. I did do well more. Done. <laughs> well done. Well uh, done. Way to make that resolution nice and ambiguous. That's the key. That's, that's right. The key. That's the, well that's done, the key. That's the key. That's the key. But it, I did not complete as many games as I wanted to. I really wanted to be like on a, all right, I'm playing this game and I want to complete it before I go on to the next one. But there was just too many games that came out this year that it was just not even possible. Some of the games I was playing weren't even completable, which I don't really count as, you know, as far as completing right, games. Right, right. But, 
But even the games I really wanted to, I just didn't. But I definitely did complete a lot more games, especially because I was playing more indie games as well this year, which are a lot easier to to complete because, you know, they're less than 10 hours usually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, I yeah, it's a yes and a no from me. Well, you know um, what? I'm going to congratulate your yes on that, man. Good well, job. thank you. Good job thank on you. that. Thank on you. On that yes. I'm going to ignore the no. <laughs> I appreciate like, that. Like a good friend. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and my resolution for this year is actually just continuing that forward uh, because it was a yes and a no. I still I want to do like a hard yes this up. Oh, okay. Year. Wait, wait. What does a hard yes mean? Are we going to make some some guidelines? All is is this going to be nest, ne- a little less ambiguous? I want to be like above 80, 85% okay. as far okay. as completing right. games. So we'll look at how completable. many games you played and then see how many you beat come exactly. next year. And we'll see if we that's get a right. percentage going. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's really that's, yeah. that's cool. I look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, anybody else uh, have their gaming resolution that you remembered? Yes. I believe mine was that I would buy less games I wasn't going to play. Uh, and I think I actually did a really good job on that. I right don't on. think oh, yeah. I bought even one game that I didn't actually open up and play. Oh, you're right. Wait, you're wait, right. wait. What were you doing before? Yeah. I would buy two or three games at the same time if they all came out around the same time. Uh-huh. And then for real, I would end up just not playing one of them. It would just stay in the packaging, right. and it would sit there until like a year or two goes by, and I go, "Oh, why oh. didn't I play this? I really wanted to. I spent <laughs> good money on it, and like I, ne- I never used to finish games either. Like I would get really bored, like eighty percent in, and be like, nah, I'm gonna go play Doctor Mario. Nah, I'm gonna go play something else.' <laughs> and this year, I got really lucky that a lot of things got pushed around and pushed back because they, it just made it made it so I had more time to play other things and finish them, so I right. could start another game. So I, I do believe I said I didn't want to buy a new game until I was done with the last game I was playing. I think that's what it was, and I'm pretty sure I succeeded in that. Well, congratulations, nice. Joe. Round of applause. <sighs> really well done. And then do you have a resolution for this year upcoming? I would like to platinum more games, actually. Wow. I think I need to full. I need to platinum more games. So I, I platinum about two, I think, a year usually because I don't get bored enough in two games. <laughs> Uh, I need to platinum more things than Dr. Mario. So I think that's that's my new... I, I want to maybe double that for the next Brian, year. Brian, she nice. just won up to your resolution. Did you see that? I did. I saw that. She's like, I take your resolution and, and I add it. <laughs> uh-huh. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, what about you, Troy? So my gaming resolution from last year was that I would play and beat a Metroidvania type game. I am not a fan of Metroidvania games. I respect them for other people who do play it. But I've tried many, many times. I fail every time. I lose interest. I get lost. I just get frustrated and I give up. So this year, I tried to act on that. I uh, downloaded Form 8, which is a Metroidvania robot game. And I started playing it. It was really cute. The art design was really nice, very minimalist. And the same thing happened. I got to a section where it was like, oh, you got can't come this way. You got to go over here and then remember where I am and blah, 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 blah. And no, 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 no. And I was like, Arr! And I gave up. I gave up, <laughs> and I never looked at any other Metroidvania but again. We agreed that that you get you get half points because Spirit Fair was a little a Wait, little no, no. Metroidvania. Actually, check it out. Bug Snacks is actually kind of like a Metroidvania. Uh, there are sections of that map that you cannot get to unless you have certain power ups, and you have to then go back to a different side of the map get that power up or fulfill that need and then go back to that area in order to get through certain barriers, which is kind of like what a Metroidvania does. Uh? Uh? So Troy doesn't get a yes, but he doesn't get a hard no. All right. I, I'll, ta- I'll take a non-hard no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I did not beat a Metroidvania. And uh, you may think, hey, maybe my resolution in 2021 will be let's finally do one. But no. I'm doubling down on my <laughs> dislike for Metroidvania. I'm done with them. I'm done. I have a new resolution for this year. After reflecting on all the games that I've played in 2020, I realize I did not play a single dating simulator. Oh. Not a single one. Is, so, is that bad? in 2021, <laughs> I vow, as my resolution, to play... 21 dating simulators. Oh, wow. Okay, divided by two, uh, then subtract five. Five uh, and a half. (laughs) Five and a half (laughs) dating simulators this year. Or or more, at least least five. At least five dating sims I want to play this year. All right, so you're doing like the the, the kids route where it's like everybody has like 1.5 kids or whatever. You're trying to do like 
five and a half games at least. <laughs> but yeah, no, I want to play at least five dating sims this year. That's my resolution or my goal for this year, my quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, what about you, Banda? So last year I decided I wanted to learn how to block in video games. And uh, I, can, I can actually say that I, I, I genuinely did. Is, uh, I've been blocking both in Cyberpunk and in Assassin's Creed. Troy genuinely sat down next to the sofa with me and is like, no, no. No, now. No, 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 now. I was like that guy in Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do they call them? A coach? <laughs> a coach? You're the um, corner man. You're the corner I'm man. I'm the corner man. Thank and, you. And it does help. It did make video games much more enjoyable this year. I'm nervous about my resolution for last year because the, I'm, I'm genuinely picking at things that I'm bad at. Blocking was one of them. For next year, I'd like to play a PvP video game. I, oh. I could let me take that back. I would like to enjoy playing a PvP video game, mm, okay. uh, which is my version of uh, Castlevania. <laughs> Mandy, Overwatch Two may I come out next year. I knew you were year. gonna say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can get in at the ground level. It's it's co op multiplayer, and then you know you just jump into that PvP every once in a while. So so that's that's my resolution: is to to find a game, to play it, and to enjoy it. Hopefully, I'm not nice. even going to say I'm going to be good at it. I feel like that's too far. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's a, that's the second one who has completely completed their uh, their resolution. So another cheers for them. Knock <sighs> it out. Ta, 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 ta. And then Lewis. Yeah, I definitely didn't complete mine. Um, mine from last year is what Joe's is for this year, which was... To platinum more games. I can say I did not do that. I don't think I platinumed a single game in 2020. <laughs> uh, it's so I got, hard. I got pretty close. Yeah, it's it's just because like once I've done most things, the world that I'm playing is kind of like dead. So I'm like, I don't really care to do anything else. I like, get that I, feeling. I, I almost yeah, did yeah. it with Ghost of Tsushima, but once I conquered everything and finished every single story even the tiny little side quest i got every like color of outfit and upgrade but there's still like some small things to do i'm like yeah i don't care this world's dead now every once in a while i run into some people but it's like swatting a fly and some of the platinum trophies are just like i just read it and immediately i'm like no i no. know <laughs> just, just no yeah I, i'd rather a platinum come from playing the game naturally like i've platinum like i platinum the first spider-man game and yeah. that was purely accidental <laughs> mm -hmm. I, you're, you're just enjoying it so much yeah i didn't even it was just a part of the game you know i didn't have to do anything weird or it, it's like oh no i have to do these things to continue the game that makes sense yeah of course mm -hmm. you know so yeah i don't know I, i'm not gonna say that's my resolution for this year um because I, I it won't happen again <laughs> um it's a fact uh so i don't even i don't even know if i have one for video games i think i have to think on that or if you guys have an idea of oh lewis do this then i'll be like oh yeah I'll yeah do that, sure. you should play 10 dating sims what if you play <laughs> a video game that doesn't look good on that purpose it doesn't look good yeah but okay so so, like, so, so like you, a... you have to be specific because does it not look good because it just was poorly made, or is that I a specific did, art style? I'm not putting any stipulations on 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 you, but I think I think that you really enjoy the aesthetics of video games. So playing a game that doesn't match your normal palette of aesthetics and seeing if you still enjoy it would be a cool stretch. You know what? I've I because like I didn't think I would like pixel games, and then I played Moonlighter, and mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed the hell out of that. And uh. Ringo Isha Ishikawa. Yeah, yeah. I also enjoyed that. I also enjoyed Hyperlight Drifter and um, all those games which are pixelated, which pixelated isn't usually my my bag, but it's it's a, it was a specific art style. And I will say that the music in all those games definitely helped it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I, I don't know. Maybe that could be a resolution. I have to think on it. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. We'll 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 go with play going outside of your norm. How about that? Yeah. Going outside of your norm and finding something. I like that. Um, and then just a really quick round table. Is there a game that you guys are most looking forward to in 2021? I have two. It's Bravely Default 2 and Horizon uh, Forbidden West. Those are the two I'm looking forward to. I'm with you on Horizon. I think that's probably the game I'm looking forward to the most. I don't know if the next God of War game is coming out this next year. If it is, then that as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah th those, those look like they're going to be some really great uh, PlayStation bangers. 
I think mine is Prim. Uh, it's one of the indie games that I've been following the longest on Twitter, and their demo comes out in January. Uh, we've had some really wonderful interactions with their developer. Um, they're genuinely nice people, and the game looks really sweet. It's like a gothic um, little girl. She's the, the daughter of death, and it's a point-and-click adventure game. It's very cute looking. I, I'm very excited nice. for it. Nice. I'm a big fan of going with what exact what immediately came to my mind, and unfortunately, kind of fortunately for me, I'm actually really looking forward to Super Mario World 3D Bowser's Fury. Um, I mean, for me, uh, there's like a bunch that I'm like, I don't, like they have release dates for supposedly this year, but um, who knows if it's actually going to happen? I mean, Horizon for sure. Uh, I love the first one. Hitman Three, I'm excited about. Resident Evil. Overwatch um, Two. If it, if Overwatch it Two, of course. Overwatch they, Two. They haven't said anything, but maybe uh, if if the Hogwarts game comes out this year, which the release uh. date is supposed to be for this year, um, Final Fantasy the, Sixteen. Yes, the Gotham Knights game. You know, Dying Light Two, so many Solar games. Ash. So many games. I can't even say one so because games. I am looking forward to so many. To Wait, so many of them. I, I think I know the one game I'm looking forward to coming out in 2021. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077. I think that's going to be a really great <laughs> one come February. It's going to be when it has Chef's its, Kiss. When it has Damn its it. first release ever. <laughs> that's what it's I should have said. <laughs> so good. It's the game uh, to get. But we're, we're, in, we're in calling all it first, guys. I really am looking forward to playing that game with all the, yeah, the yeah, fixes. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Cool. I, ha- I, have, I haven't continued because I'm waiting. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So uh, thank you guys for, for joining me on that, on that journey. And uh, so that'll do it for our... Mighty, Mighty Morsel Tasty Topic. I got you. Bow. Oh. So that brings us to our Dragon of the Week. Adieu, 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 adieu. adieu. It's the Dragon of the Year. Oh, it's so sheer. It's the Dragon of the Year. So don't shed a tear. Dragon of the Year. Dragon of the Year. <laughs> and this year, uh, as 2020 ends, our Dragon of the Year is going to be much more about uh, certain individuals and, and, and people who just helped us throughout the year. So we'll take a moment and actually thank them. So to so Lewis and Hassel, uh, you guys joined us this year. And in Lewis's case, you actually rejoined us this year. And it was, it was quite amazing to have you back. I knew you had your, your time in New York, and <laughs> it, was, it was a little rough. But, but we're, we're so happy to have you back in our Dragon family. Uh, your enthusiasm for murder... Uh, your expertise in espionage, and uh, for Hassel, his general knowledge of how sports work allowed us to just reach new heights in video game coverage. We also want to thank Plug It's Live, I Forgot I Owned That Podcast, Prince Baby Boy, Still Loading Podcast. Thank you for your support, your advice, and your collaboration. This has been a great year where we, we delved into the Twitchiverse. And not only were we able to find new friends from other streamers, but we're also able to start boasting our social media and making connections. We joined a guild in Instagram with Still Loading and and other uh, Gaming Memories pod, and we were able to support each other through that. Mandy was able to make new rows on Twitter with her indie community, reaching out to developers and the like. And it's just been a great year where our community of passionate gamers, content creators has grown. So thank you all for your wisdom, friendship, and we hope that that friendship continues to allow us to reflect and to improve going forward. To Jen B, the Ren and Deluxe Tux, thank you for becoming our 2020 Twitch VIPs. Your stellar support of our Twitch stream is valuable beyond words. Uh, you give us the confidence to log in and start that Twitch knowing that we're going to have friends there to, to chit chat with us. Thank you for listening, chatting, and most of all, spending time with us. We're honored by your friendship, your wit, and your extensive knowledge of desserts. And lastly, to everyone listening at home, thank you for your ongoing support. Your likes, comments, chat, and your subscriptions allowed us to expand our little video game podcast from a weekly audio journal into a full-blown network of virtual services. Many thanks to Rhythm Bastard, who created our theme song and helped us kind of become who we are. We cannot express into words what all of your contributions mean to us. May you all find happiness, love, peace, and safety in the coming year. Happy New Year from the Taste of Dragons.
And uh, and so that will wrap it up for this week's episode and for this year, or I'm sorry, in last year, <laughs> <laughs> and last year, thankfully for all of you, everyone involved. But you can always find us online. That's right. Check us out at twitch.tv backslash taste of dragons. That's where we are on live six days a week on Twitch. Join in for varied, different, unique program, each hosted from a different dragon. Uh, find your favorite dragon and don't tell anyone else. Or have all of us be your favorite dragons. And join us on there when you can. Jump into chat. Drop us a follow. Hit a subscribe. Whatever you would feel comfortable doing. Also, make sure to check us out on Instagram at Taste of Dragons. That is where we post a lot of our weekly going-ons, any videos we like that we're just having fun making, or pictures of our doggos or foods. <laughs> Jump on there to enjoy some fun Taste of Dragons content. But don't forget to also hop onto our Twitter account, at Taste of Dragons. That's where we are cultivating a conversation with the independent game developer community and those who are uh, surrounding that, that family. Uh, Mandy heads up that Twitter account. Mandy, would you mind sharing with us a indie game that you may have come across this week? Yes, from the makers of The Dark Side Detective. Uh, this week, I just found out that they're making a brand new video game. In addition to The Dark Side Detective 2, they're also making a game called Eldridge House, which is a like spooky noir 3D uh, comic book style video game. Uh, it seems to be a mystery, and the art's really cool. So check out Eldridge House by Spooky Doorway. That sounds fantastic, Mandy. Thank you so much. And thank you all for this incredible year of gaming and celebration of gaming. If you can, at the end of this year, we would love to hear some of your comments, your thoughts. Feel free to jump on Apple or, or Spotify or wherever you're listening to this. Uh, podcast and drop us a little review a rating it definitely helps us with the algorithms trying to uh, gain some more traction uh, we appreciate you all and can't wait for more fun dragon content in 2021 and sandwiches that's right <laughs> and if you also know us personally please send us a text we'd love to hear your guys's thoughts yeah i'll take um, it you know definitely yeah, well you know we love interacting with all of you guys, uh, whoever's listening and whoever's not listening. You know, it's, this has been a, a crazy year and uh, and anything helps. So uh, as always, though, my name is Brian. My name is Troy. Amanda. I'm Lewis. And I'm Joe. And we are The, the Taste, Taste of Dragons. Dragons. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Taste of Dragons Gaming Podcast, a podcast for everyone's day.